Hey, good morning, friends. Mark Holmes here, of course, with my buddy Michael Anthony Fitness, and we're actually getting ready to rip out a bathroom here. Um, but as always, thank you guys for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Blue Sports Report. Without you guys, this don't work without you guys. So, an update on Justin, um, Texas Sports Roundup. Um, we have been doing fantastic with the donations and everything else. I wish I could meet him too. I wish I could go to the game too. Um, what we're gonna, he's gonna be going to the Rams game next Sunday, and I'm working on doing some extra stuff. This is gonna be like a dream trip. Um, I don't want to give all the details of all the things he's doing, and if we raise just a little bit more money, we're gonna be doing something that's gonna be really special and, and memorable and stuff for him. And the great news is, it's gonna be Miss Jackie's birthday too. So Miss Jackie's gonna be there, and um, Miss Jackie's gonna be able to get me some pictures and things like that. So you know, Miss Jackie. I I think she's going to be 26 on uh, the 16th. That's younger than me. Yeah, I think she'll be 26. I'm about 30 in about six months. Yeah, so shout out to Miss Jackie and everything else. And um, um, I'm looking forward to seeing everything else with this. Uh, we got to get him from San Antonio to Texas, I mean to Dallas, and then we got to get him a place to stay and all that stuff together. But Cowboys Experience is helping out with all this stuff, you know, and I always tell you guys, Cowboy Experience, man, they, they are my guys. They, you know, my man Barry has taken good care of us, and uh, he's going to take great care of Justin. So if you want to, uh, I'll, I'll put the link in here. So... This season's not over, and I hate to start thinking about next year um, before it's over because anything can happen. We had the New York Stinking Giants as a wild card come into our house after we had home field advantage and beat us on the way to the Super Bowl, beating an 18-0 New England Patriots. So anything's possible. I, I got to tell you, when I watch that game, in my mind, I, I don't want to think this, I don't want to believe this, but I really and truly feel like the Cowboys – gave up on that game, that they were just basically doing the lookout block, and you know what I mean by lookout block, lookout block is when, um, you need a knife, okay, so you take some of the plastic and just, what I want to do is put, well, yeah, we'll take the cabinet off the wall, we're, we're getting ready to rip some stuff out, lookout block is, is like, we had a, a high school coach, I, I mean, high school quarterback who was just an ass, and he was a year younger than us, he was a junior, and in the last game of the season, we wanted to get payback. And payback was, is we went up to the line of scrimmage. We all knew this. We basically told the opposition, listen, we're not blocking you. It's a pass play. And when the ball was snapped, we turned around and said, look out. So that way, boom, got smacked. Probably got a concussion because he sure came up looking like he was seeing stars. But that was our way of getting back at him of all the times he was calling us this, that, and the other. You guys can't block. You're sorry. You know what? Yeah, payback is a mother, okay? But I felt like the Cowboy players were like, if we do like we did last year, we're going to be back in the same spot with Jason Garrett. That's what I felt like when I watched that game because I didn't see any fire. I didn't see any passion. I didn't see any guys upset. I didn't look like I saw people that were out trying to save a man's job. I looked at, to me, it looked like some guys that were out to bury a guy. Because I think that everybody in this situation needs to move on. I think Jason Garrett would be better suited going someplace else with a fresh start. You know, because he doesn't look like he's having fun. He does not. You can't tell me that he's enjoying being the coach of the Dallas Cowboys right now. With all of the pressure and everything else that's going on. And the Cowboys, at this point, just need to start over. Because just like um, fish and family, they get stale. They get funky after about three days. And Jason Garrett, well, he smells like some rotten fish right now. Okay? See, that's my father-in-law. He, he the one that gave me that, that saying right there. Fish and family get old after about three days. <laughs> okay? And that's where we are with Jason Garrett. Jason Garrett, it's just stale. You need a new outlook. You need a guy who's going to come in and make the players say, I don't know if I'm going to fit his system, if I'm going to be here. Put them on edge to make them perform. And I've been thinking about Ron Rivera. And um, a lot of people say, go with a college coach. You know, there's a risk of that because it could be Jimmy Johnson or it could be Chip Kelly. You don't know. Um, there's no track record. 
But here's what I do know, at least about somebody like Ron Rivera. Ron Rivera is a defensive-minded coach. He was part of that 85 Bears Super Bowl team. He has gotten great defensive performance for Carolina. And at this point, I love Rod Marnelli, who has taken guys who you did not think could play football. And, well, here's the thing. Well, he's got a point there. With Rod Marnelli, he is fantastic at taking guys that were past, has-beens, never was, guys you didn't think were going to be any good, and turning them into productive players. And he has a scheme that we've had since 2013, okay? And people will say, well, look at Chris Richard. He's not doing anything. Well, he's the secondary coach. Still Rod Marnelli's defense. And when I look at this defense, this defense isn't as aggressive as it was in Seattle. So it's not that Chris Richard has full, full go of it. And the fact that Rod Marnelli got the coordinator job after 2012, when the, I'm sorry, 2013, when the Dallas Cowboys were historically the worst defense in the NFL. And that was when they had Jason Hatcher, who got 11 sacks, and that's when they had DeMarcus Ware still there. That team stunk on defense, and Rod Marnelli was there, and he got elevated to defense coordinator. And the defense has gotten better until this year. This year it's definitely regressed. But I think the problem is, is this philosophy of as he calls them, racing lizards. He believes in fast guys, and there's nothing wrong with fast guys. I love fast pass rushers. You know, Robert Quinn coming around the edge is incredible. But the philosophy is, is these fast guys that are 6'2", 6'4", that are under 300 pounds, they're lightweights. And the problem is, is you can't always stunt your way against a running team. At some point, you have to be able to just drop an anchor. By that, I mean can't give up space. You can't get blown in the secondary. But when you got a defensive tackle that's 270, 280, that's what happens against a running and drive blocking. You can't stunt past the drive blocking. There's not enough time to get past that guy. You get blown away. And this is where it's time to try a different philosophy. And there's nothing wrong with having fast guys. I love fast guys that can rush. But you can't have that as your bread and butter. And what teams have realized the, the, what to do is hit them hard, hit them fast with drives up the middle. Catch them in the stunts. Because if you catch a guy stepping this way and I'm drive blocking, I'm driving you right out the hole. And that's why you see these holes that are open. So I think it's time now for us to start looking in a different direction on this defensive philosophy. And I, for one would be okay with saying, okay, you know what? Our defense has regressed. Chris Richard, we saw what you did with the Seattle Seahawks, okay? We're going to turn this over to you fully. Do it as a year's experiment. See how it goes. Let him get the type of guys that he wants. Let him run the type of formations and packages that he wants. Let him get guys that he wants. Um, and, and, and see, we gave Jason Garrett 10 years to do on-the-job training. This guy at least has experience and has a ring as a coach. Like I said, I got nothing against Rod Marnelli, but at some point, that's what I'm saying, one more friend. I love Rod Marnelli, but I think this defensive scheme that we're using has been there for too long, and it's gotten stale. Um, I need a wrench so we can take the toilet up next. Um, oh, and uh, we'll get the plastic up in here so that way we can... Yeah, so uh, Michael Anthony over here, he's like, you know, Dad, we got work to do. I, I got work to do. I got, I got to get some work done. But um, what we'll probably do, if you guys, uh, I'll, I'll live stream while we're working on in here, then that way you guys can keep up and we can have a conversation, as always, you know, for my day job. But for some reason, I, I, I don't know what's going on with YouTube. I got more than enough subscribers to be able to live stream mobily on my other channel. It's supposed to be a 1,000 subscribers. Well, I got like... 1500 for some reason I still can't live stream on the channel I, I and you can't talk to anybody on YouTube you just can't they just don't have people to talk to <sighs> hopefully we get the win tomorrow that's all I'm hoping for um, I guess that's all I got to add yeah that's all I got to add so if you still want to donate to GoFundMe I'll put the link um, in the bottom of the description on here so that way we can try it See if we can do some really extra special stuff. And any funds raised beyond 
uh, the, the cost of him going to the game, we're going to actually donate to a homeless shelter, so that way it'll help others as well. I'm Mark Holmes with, of course, Michael Anthony Fitness. It's time to go to work.